just, he took, kind of took the words out of my mouth, Mary, because, uh, you know, he, he was going around the room getting um, what, you're, what you guys are grateful for. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about what I'm grateful for. And I was thinking about at the beginning of the year, how everybody thought this was going to be their year. And, you know, we were excited about what was going to happen. You know, it's 2020, it's a new decade, it's a new year. And, and uh, I remember I preached a message and I said, um, is 2020 still your year? Is it still your year? Because I, I believe it is. I believe this is still a year of blessing. I believe that God is still wanting to minister to us and speak to us and, and do things. It's just a question of us. Are we, are we going to meet God at the table, you know? And uh, our circumstances, they don't dictate whether we're going to be good or not. You know, it's like I always tell you guys, you can't let, you can't let situations dictate your day, for example. You can't let coworkers dictate your day and people dictate how you're going to feel today. And am I going to feel this way or feel that way based on what's going on around me? You can't allow that to happen to you. It's the same thing with 2020. We can't allow everything that's going on to steal our peace and to steal our faith. You know, now's the time where we're supposed to rise above it, stand above it. Amen. And show that, hey, when when times get tough. We can be strong. We can raise above it. We can stand on the mountaintop and, and you know what? Lift other people up as well, you know, which, which I feel like a lot of you guys in here are doing. So I'm just real thankful. If I can say anything, I'm just thankful for you guys and for this church and for everything, your support and for you just being here. Because just like Pastor Larry, it, it really touches me to see you guys here every Sunday and Wednesday, knowing everything that's going on, you're still coming and um. You know, it's like I always say, you guys are like family to me. You know, I know that I can uh, thank you guys for the kind words, you know, for me and Pastor Larry, but I just want to return those to you guys because I feel like I can count on y'all for anything too. You know, I know that if I was poor and starving, I know that everybody in here would feed me. Everybody in here, you know, would, would put clothes on my back, you know, just like you would do for the one sitting next to you, right? I would do the same thing for you. And that's the reason why the church exists, amen? In the New Testament, the Bible says that nobody lacked because if somebody lacked, that one person stood up and gave to that person and they, they were all equal, you know, they were all good. And uh, so just thank you guys so much. I'm thankful for y'all. And, you know, I'm thankful because God is on the move and I still believe that he's going to do some great things. You know, it's, it's, I, I haven't, I've had my times this, this year, Mary, you know, especially, you know, with what's going on with Joe now. Um, I had shared with you guys Wednesday that, that really kind of, shook me a little bit, you know, when I, when I found out that it, that it came back, uh, you know, I wasn't just destroyed or anything, but I was just, I just started scratching my head, you know, and I'm like, well, what's, what's going on with that? You know, we've been praying, we've been seeking and, but, you know, God reminded me that it's still not over yet. You know, it's, it's, it's not over, you know, it's, it, God can, God can turn things around in a second if, he, you know, if, if he's, it, it's, it's not a matter of that, you know, and um, I was thinking, you know, like if I, I went outside and I started thinking, I'm like, what kind of attitude would I have if that began to happen to me? You know, how would, how would I take it? And I really think, Albert, that like, I really think that if something like that happened to me, I'm not even going to lie. Initially, I'd probably be very upset, very angry at God. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. Okay. Can I be transparent with y'all? Amen. How, how many of you would feel that way if something like that happened? Some bad things have happened to you really the initial response is anger, right? You get mad because you don't understand why this is happening. Why would God allow this to happen? I've been faithful. I've been seeking God. I've been trying to be a good person. You know, I haven't wronged anybody. I haven't done anything wrong. Why is this happening? So you get angry. But then you come to a realization that you're at a fork in the road where you can either respond this way or you can respond that way. Amen. You can choose to live the rest of your life, if, you're, if your life is now shortened, you can choose to live the rest of those years, Brother Tim, or days or weeks or months with bitterness and with anger and with pain, negative about everything, and then, you know, you, you die. Or you can finish it out in faith. And you can say, Lord, even if I don't get healed, I'm still going to believe that you're a healer. I'm still going to believe that you're well able. Amen. And it, it, it's, it really is just a matter of your mindset, Albert. How are you going to go out? You know, if you're going to go out, how are you going to go out? You know, how are you going to respond to this situation? 
And I, you know, I, w- I would probably be, like I said, angry the first couple of days, but I think that afterwards I would come to that realization and I would just say, you know what, I'm just going to stand in faith. Just like Pastor Larry said, I'm going to stand in faith no matter what happens. Because as he said, the Bible says, when you've done all that you know how to do, to just stand in faith. So when the winds come, when they start hitting you, you ain't going to fall because your house is built on a rock. Amen. And you ain't going to go nowhere. That's what building a house on a rock is all about. It's all about building on faith. And I know that Pastor Larry had mentioned um, the gentleman that, that had cancer at the old church we were going to. And that is exactly the way, when he passed away, that's exactly the mindset he had. He still believed that God was a healer. He was still coming to church. That boy would be walking around. He lived close by the church. He would be walking around with earbuds in his ears, listening to messages like constantly all day, just sermons and things like that, just getting the word inside of him. He would bring the earbuds and want us to listen to him. Like, I'll listen to it later, you know. (laughs) He want us to, you know, he was just real excited about God. But uh, I've never seen anybody that had more faith than that guy, you know. And uh, I pray that I can be more like him, you know, when when bad situations hit me. Because that hit him, and look at his mindset. But when our car breaks down, we just lose all faith. (laughs) Is Is that true? Right. Whenever somebody makes us mad, it's like we just throw God out the window. Anyway, what if you had cancer, though? Man, you know, and he was still coming to church, you know. And man, we can't get people to come to church just because it's raining outside, you know? <laughs> I don't understand that, you know? <laughs> man, yeah, man, I don't, I, don't, I don't understand that, you know? But, but God sees it, you know? God sees it, and he, I believe that God honors, he, he honors the faith that you have. And, um, you know, the, the Bible says that, like, the most important thing to have is faith. You know, the most important thing to have is faith. I mean, it says, the reason why I say that is because the word says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if you want to know if you're pleasing God today, you shouldn't ask yourself, well, did I not go to the bar last night? Did I read my Bible yesterday? Did I, did I stop popping off at my wife and my husband? Does that, is that, does that please God? Well, of course that pleases God. You know, he wants us to live a holy life and things like that. But what really pleases him and what really matters to him is whether or not you have that faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because let me tell you guys a secret. You can, let's say you have like an anger problem. Or, you know, you're, you always get mad at somebody. You know, it, it's, it doesn't take a lot to set you off. You can still be pleasing to God with that mindset. Nobody likes that when I said that. I didn't get one amen. <laughs> God, is God still pleased with you when you have an anger problem? He's still pleased with you. Does he like the anger problem? No, he doesn't like the anger problem. But is he pleased with you? Yes. You see, see I, man, I'm, I'm disappointed in you guys. I should have got a resounding amen when I said that. Y'all been coming here for a long time. God is still pleased with you even though you might have issues in your life. Because when he looks at you, he sees Jesus Christ. And he's, there's no way he can't be pleased with Jesus Christ, right? Because you're covered in his blood. You're covered in the blood of the lamb. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. So you can still be pleasing to God in that, in that circumstance, you know, in those kind of situations. But of course, God wants us to work on those things. God wants it. He wants to mold us. He wants to shape us. And that's where yielding to God comes in. Because the more you yield to God, the more that anger will just begin to melt away. You're going to notice that the more time you spend with God, the less old things that used to make you mad, Mary, won't make you mad anymore. They won't. Because the presence of God is in your life. And God, you, you might not even feel it. You might not even sense it. You might not even know it. But God is changing you on the inside. You know, it's, it's, we might not be able to see it with our physical eyes, Annie, but we know that God is changing us on the inside. That's why I encourage you guys. That's why you might get tired of Pastor Larry and I saying it, but we always encourage you guys to come. Hear the word. Don't stop coming. Don't stop having faith. Keep coming because it will change you. It's going to mold you. It's going to sculpt you into the person that you want to be. Amen. So, amen. I feel, oh man, I feel a preach coming on already. Amen. (laughs) 
Yes, amen. But uh, anyways, I just wanted to give you guys a little encouragement there, amen. So uh, don't eat too much turkey this week either. <laughs> amen. Don't be gaining no pounds this week, amen. Too late, she said. <laughs> yeah, amen. I want y'all to turn in y'all's Bible to 2 Kings. We're going to get old school today, Old Testament. I'm going to try to... Uh, I'm going to try to be mindful of my time today. Amen. I'm really trying to work on staying within time. So as y'all can see, here's my proof right here. I got a lot of time right here. <laughs> it's going to start buzzing whenever it goes off. So I'll know when to stop. <laughs> Amen. So uh, 2 Kings chapter 2. I want to share with y'all uh, a very interesting word today. So, um, but... I'm a, uh, let me just say this. I, I want you to look at the person next to you and say, buckle up. Okay. And now say, now say, don't go anywhere. <laughs> don't go anywhere. Because I don't, I hope this don't scare you away. Okay. But I got something for you guys today. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. It's kind of uh, a tough love message. Okay. Is that okay? Can you take that? Amen. Amen. Because I'm preaching to myself as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You know, I can, I can, uh, I can only share, I can only share with you guys, you know, what I feel like God has has put in my heart. And, uh, you know, this, I was meditating and, and just kind of thinking and, and uh, God had, he actually gave me two messages, but uh, I wanted to share this one with you guys. So um, I know there's a lot of people that might be, I don't, there's some people like to preach like holiday themed messages when the holidays come around, you know, it's got to be a Christmas message when it's Christmas. It's got to be a Thanksgiving message, and I'm just not into that. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to, whatever God gives me, that's what I'm going to give you, okay? If he gives me a Christmas message, I'll give you a Christmas message, okay? But uh, I'm just going to follow the Spirit of the Lord here, okay? Uh, 2 Kings chapter 2, I'm sorry, we're going to start at verse 12. Old school, amen? It says, and... Elisha saw it, and he cried out, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. Okay, so let me, let me just stop. I, I didn't want to read all the scriptures before this. Maybe I should have, but this is the story where uh, there was, how many of y'all know, there was Elijah and then Elisha, okay? Elisha was the servant of Elijah, okay? So Elijah and Elisha were walking, and the Bible says that a chariot of fire and uh, horses of fire appeared. And they came, and they took Elijah up in a whirlwind. And so he literally just ascended, I guess, to heaven. It doesn't really say. It just says it took him. And uh, we really don't know why. It just says that that happened to Elijah. And... Um, when it happened, this is where we pick it up in verse 12. It says, Elijah saw it, and he said, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he gets, he's in awe of what he just saw, right? And so he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes, and he tore them into two pieces. Now, in the Old Testament, even in the New Testament, uh, when people would tear their clothes, it was because they were Usually it was because they were frustrated or upset about something, you know, or they were, it had, sometimes it had to do with repentance. They would tear their clothes and, you know, to show God something. When, when Jesus, uh, when Jesus had told the high priest that he was the son of God, the high priest tore his clothes. He tore his robes and he really wasn't supposed to do that, but he did it to show his frustration and, you know, hey, look, this, look at what's going on here. And it says, uh, he saw that, he tore his clothes into two pieces, and he also, he took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him. So he picked up his mantle, and he went back, and he stood by the bank of Jordan. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen, go to the next verse, Pastor Larry, I think there's another part on there, that had fallen from him, and he struck the water with it. So he rolled it up, and he struck the water with it, and he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also struck the water, it was divided this way, and it was divided that way. 
and Elisha crossed over. Okay, so I'll tell you guys in a minute what I'm going to talk about. But as I said before, Elijah Mary was the servant of Elijah. So Elijah found him, and the Bible says that he threw his, his, his mantle on him, and basically to show that his, uh, his anointing and his power, his ministry was going to be given to Elijah now. And Elijah actually did this in a previous chapter. He did the same thing. He took his mantle off, and he struck the water, and it parted it, and they walked through. And now Elijah did the same thing. So Elijah was, he was, the Bible calls him a servant, okay? Elijah was a servant of Elijah. And, you know, servants in those days, they followed their masters everywhere, right? And they did everything for them. And they, they stuck to them, you know, like glue. And Elijah, he had been with Elijah, Okay, are y'all following me so far? Staying with me? Okay. Elijah, his name means my God is Yahweh. The one that was taken up in the whirlwind, his name means my God is Yahweh. And so Elijah was spending a lot of time with my God is Yahweh. He was spending time with my God is Yahweh. That's literally what his name means. And he was, he was his servant. He did things for him. Like I said, they were always together. And he was able, he was able to hit that water and to part it just like Elijah did. But the only reason, and he was able to do it is because he had been spending time with Elijah, with Elijah, who is my God is Yahweh. You know, okay, yeah, you get where I'm going now. He, he was spending, Elijah would not have been able to do that. I mean, I can't prove that to you for the scriptures, but I mean, this is common sense. Elijah wouldn't have been able to do what he did if he hadn't had that anointing from Elijah and was spending time with him. You understand? And what we have today is we have a lot of people, especially now, you know, as we were beginning, as Pastor Larry was saying, there's a lot of needs and there's a lot of, there's kind of a little disappointment in the air, you know, like within the church. Not, not just this church, but like people are disappointed in the virus. I'm, I'm not even going to lie to y'all, and, well, should I say this? Uh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll share it with you, because you guys can take it. There was a prophet that said that this won't be over until 2025. <laughs> now, don't get disappointed, because there's also prophets that said that this would have been over before July the 4th. <laughs> so, yeah, people miss God, you understand? And I don't even know who this this prophet is, okay, so I don't know anything about, you know, about his standing, or is he really a man of God, or anything like that, Pastor Larry was actually the one that told me that, so don't, don't, in other words, don't let that disappoint you, because we don't know, but, you know, prophets miss, have, they've missed it in the election, <laughs> many prophets missed it with the election, okay, and there's still prophets saying this is going to be over, to, not till 2025, well, I believe if the church begins to really pray and really begins to seek God for it, I think we can remove it. I don't know about y'all, but maybe I just have crazy faith. You know, I don't know. It's not, but don't let that disappoint you or anything like that. But there's just a lot of, I, I feel like there's a lot of Christians today that are kind of walking with their heads down because a lot of everything that's going on. You know, like we said, the election, the, the, the virus and things, and, you know, just even here, you know, there are some things that are going on that we wish wouldn't be going on. But I love what you guys all had said. You were so, we're still so thankful, and we know that God is still powerful. That's the right mindset to have. That's the mindset that's going to that's gonna remove these things. Amen? So there's a lot of that going around right now, and I feel like there's a lot of people out there that are saying, where is the God of Elijah? They're saying, where, 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 is, where is the God of Elijah right now? Because, Eli like I said, Elijah was frustrated in this scripture. Because he tore his clothes. Tearing his clothes means that he's frustrated. And he was kind of wondering what he had saw. And I should have, maybe I should have read the scriptures before this. But as they were walking along, uh, they were, as Elijah and Elijah were walking along, there were actually other prophets that were coming to them as they were going through these cities. And they were telling Elijah, they were saying, hey, did you know that your master there is going to be taken from you today? There were prophets. And he said, yeah, I know. He said, but be quiet. <laughs> he like, he didn't want him to leave. You know, he, he, was, he was stuck to Elijah. You know, he's that, he was a big part of his life. And he didn't want to see him leave. 
And so they went to another town, and other prophets would come up, and they, did you know he's going to leave? And the same thing happened. I already know that. Be quiet. Don't tell me anymore. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you ever had people tell you things that you don't want to know, and you tell them, yeah, I know it, but don't tell me. Be quiet. I don't want to hear that right now. And that's what was going on here. And so when Elijah was taken from him, he was frustrated. And so he said, where is the God of Elijah? Where is he at? And he, he hit the water. But God showed up for him. Right, because he parted the waters for him. So it's almost like God was saying, yes, I took Elijah from you, but my anointing is now on you, and I'm going to be with you just like I was with Elijah. Just like, uh, y'all remember the story of Moses and Joshua? When Moses died, the Bible says that Joshua and the people mourned him for many days. But then at the beginning of Joshua, God said, that's enough mourning. Don't cry anymore. He said, I'm going to be with you just like I was with Moses. I'm going to go with you exactly, exactly the same way I was with Moses. I'm going to be with you. Amen. If God told me that, I would be encouraged, right? Yeah. You know, I would be like, man, I can do this now, right? I can, I can go forward with this. And so God doesn't just leave us worse off, you know, just because something has left our life. Amen. You know, it, it, so, hey, let that be a little encouraging word to you right there. If you're going through something today... God says, I'm going to be with you just like I was with you before you were going through what you're going through now. He's going to stay with you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. Nothing can take you out of his hand. So God will be with you just the way he was with you before you started going through this. I mean, that's, that's a side note. That's free. <laughs> you don't got to give any offering for that. <laughs> so Elijah was upset. He said, where's the God of Elijah? He hit the, hit the bank. The water's parted, so God said, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to go with you. Your ministry is going to be great, too. And it was. But there are people today, Mary, that are trying to do the same thing. And they're saying, I'm so frustrated by what's going on. Where is the God of Elijah? And what's really getting to people is that they're not seeing those waters being parted. Wow. What, do you, what do you do when that happens, Mary? What do you do whenever you, you're frustrated already to the point of, like, no return? And then you ask and you call out to God, where is God? Where is the God of Elijah? And it still seems like he's not there. What do you do then? Man, it's a tough place to be in, right? I've been there before, right? You call on God, you're frustrated by what's going on, and it still seems like he got in his car and drove away. <laughs> where is God, right? Well, let's go back to what we were talking about at the beginning. That's where you have to maintain that attitude of faith. But there are a lot of people that are hitting the water, and the reason why those waters aren't parting, I'm not saying this is for anybody in here, okay? This is just the word that God gave me. The reason why those waters are not parting is because are you like Elijah was? Elijah was the one who was spending time with my God as Yahweh. He was the servant of my God as Yahweh. He was full of God. You see, we can't, guys, look, we can't, we, we believe that God is, he's for us, he's not against us, right? He, he, want, he wants to bless us. But there are a lot of people that like to come and take, but they don't ever want to really have a relationship with God. But the power, church, the reason why I always tell you guys this, and the reason why this is so important is because the power that you need, not just the feel-good message, not just a sugar daddy God that gives you whenever you don't have any, when you don't have, the power that you need in life, you don't need another message, the power is in your relationship with God. The power, your victory is in your relationship with God. Do you have a relationship with God, just like Elijah had with Elijah? So whenever he was able to hit that water, it parted. We hit the water, and we really, have we really, do we really have that relationship with God to be able to do that? And then we get upset with God even more because he didn't part the water, but God is saying, well, hold up. You got the spirit of God inside of you, but you're, you haven't been stirring that pot up inside of you lately. You haven't, you haven't been stirring the fire up lately. So the reason why I might not part those waters for you right now 
It could be because God is trying to teach us that we need to draw even closer to him. You understand? So it's not, it's not the time to get frustrated, Albert. It's the time to draw closer to God. And are you desperate enough to say, God, I'm going to seek you even more, and I'm not going to let go of you. And yes, I might not have been you know, living for you the way I've been wanting to live for you or the way you want me to live for you lately. I understand that, but God, I'm going to, I'm going to draw closer to you now. Does this sound like works to anybody in here? No, it's not. It's not works because even though we believe in grace at this church, I'm going to always teach you guys that there is a drawing near that needs to happen in your walk with God. Because I don't want just a, a people that come just to hear a message and feel good and go home. I want you to have power in your life. And the only way that comes is through a relationship with God. If you want to change the atmospheres in your life, you want to change situations in your life, it comes from building that relationship with God. Did I step on y'all's toes when I said that? <laughs> so people are asking, where is the God of Elijah? And you know what God is asking? Where are the Elijahs of God? Where are the Elijahs of God? Where, where, where is the, where is the, the desire to, to seek God anymore, Pastor Larry? As a, as a church in the world, I just feel like, I feel like we're losing a desire to seek God. Ooh, that's good. I, I feel like we feel like there, there's no need to draw near anymore. You know, the relationship of God uh, it, it is God is more like a pastime to people now. It's more like something I do. And that's it. You know, it's, it's just a way to feel good. I believe that there are some people that go to church because they're bored. <laughs> and that's not a good thing to do. Right. Like I always say, you should leave. You should leave. Always. You should come to church with an attitude of I want to be changed. I want to learn something that's going to help me and be changed. Yeah. Amen. So if I'm stepping on y'all's toes right now, it's going to get good in a minute. OK, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But th there's a notion that there, there's this uh, there's this notion in the church today that God doesn't want us to sacrifice anything. And a relationship with God, it, 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 I'm just telling you guys the truth, okay? A relationship with God requires sacrifice. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And I, I feel like we're losing that. I, we're we're kind of getting this idea that there's no need to sacrifice anymore. Amen. That it's, that it, you know, like I said, God's a sugar daddy. He wants to, all he wants to do is give you gifts. And, you know, we're, we're not to do anything. Right? We're, we're not, we, we did, he did it's like there is no seeking anymore. There is no passion for God anymore. It's just, God, give me, give me, give me. And God is a good, good father. And sometimes he does give to us, even though we haven't been, you know, maybe living the way we should be. He still does give to us, Pastor Larry. But the Bible says it's for repentance. He gives the goodness of God leads us to repentance. And repentance isn't a bad word. It just means to a change of mind. He, he's, he's good to us because he wants us to change our mind. That's, that's, why, he, that's why he is that way, right? And, but they're, 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 we, we can't have this, this thought, church, that living for God is always supposed to be a bed of roses and that we're never going to feel any kind of growing pains in our life. Y'all remember growing up young and you would feel those pains in your legs and in your arms, those growing pains, right? Because you were growing when your muscles are stretching and we feel like we're never supposed to experience that anymore. Like we're never supposed to have that anymore. But a relationship with God will take sacrifice. Am I being, am I truthful with that? Amen. It does take a little bit of sacrifice. It does take a little bit of saying, hey, I'm going to turn the television off. And I'm going to seek God right now. I've been watching Bonanza all week. <laughs> it's time to turn Bonanza off, and it's time to seek God. It's time to look for God. And you see, I'm trying to help you all today because all these things that are going on right now, they, they, you, you'll find your victory in the presence of God. Amen. And we, you got to get into the presence of God. You got, and, and what it is is that, when you begin to get into the presence of God and seek God, it's like even if the situation continues for a little bit longer, it won't affect you because your mind is changed and your mind is set on, on the Lord. And that's why the word says that he'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you, on him, right? 
Amen. So uh, go to Hebrews chapter 10. Are y'all still with me? <laughs> Amen. Hebrews chapter 10. Amen. I'm just, I'm feeling this word today, y'all. Hebrews chapter 10, look at verse 5. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5. Okay, so like I said, guys, there's a, we can't have this notion that there, it does, that God doesn't want us to sacrifice anything. Because let's say, like, for example, how many of you have ever said to yourself, excuse me, that you want to pray more? Like, you literally want to, you want to pray a little bit more, right? I, f- I felt like that, too. I'm like, man, I need to pray more, Mary, right? And that's good. But prayer actually takes literal minutes and time. It, like, literally, it's not outside of time. It literally takes minutes, however long you want to pray, seconds. It takes literal minutes and hours, or, you know, if, if you pray that long, it takes time. And time is something we ain't got today. <laughs> time is something I don't have a lot of. So what does that mean? That means I have to sacrifice something else if I want that. And so if you want to pray more, it, that's why it takes a little bit of sacrifice. Amen? All right, so look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5. It says, therefore, when he, that means Jesus, when he came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire. Sacrifice you did not desire, but a body you've prepared for me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure Then I said, Behold, I have come, and the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will, God. Now, previously saying, sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin, you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. And I'm just going to stop right there. Now, why did I read that? Because, like I said, there's a notion that God doesn't like sacrifice, like he doesn't want us to sacrifice anything. He just wants us to come and be blessed and be touched. And a lot of people, I, I feel, Pastor Larry, a lot of people look at this scripture in order to say that because it says that God doesn't desire sacrifice. I say that because I've heard somebody say that before, Mary. They said, you know, God doesn't care about your sacrifices. He doesn't care because this scripture right here, sacrifice, I don't have any desire in you. But look at the context of the scripture. What are the sacrifices that he doesn't desire? Animal sacrifices, <laughs> burnt sacrifices. So he, do, he doesn't, as we all know, we know our Bibles in here, right? We know that the, uh, Jesus sacrificed himself one time on the cross, so therefore he doesn't desire or doesn't require animal sacrifices anymore. So we cannot use this scripture to say that God doesn't want us to sacrifice things in our life. Because does the New Testament, does the New Testament encourage sacrifice? Let me ask you guys that. Does the New Testament encourage sacrifice? I would say, yeah. Did the apostles sacrifice things? Did, did Peter sacrifice things? Did Paul sacrifice things? Did Jesus sacrifice things? He was the ultimate sacrifice for us, right? Now, look at, uh, so since you're in Hebrews, jump over to chapter 13. And uh, I'm going to keep talking, and then we'll read this one for a minute. Are you with me, church? Yeah. Amen. There's a lot of, like I said, there's this notion in the church that kind of teaches that we don't really have to sacrifice anymore. And, um, you know, Pastor Larry, there's a, if, if we're not careful, like these, these, these thoughts of, of grace and things like that can sometimes lead to that. You know, if, if it's all by grace, by grace, by grace, that's good. But we still teach that we need to draw near to God ourselves, right? Grace says that God reconciled the world to himself based on nothing that you've done. God has made it right between you and him. It's, it's done. The friendship is restored. The relationship is restored. But then it goes on to say, I beg you, therefore, to be reconciled to God. God has reconciled himself, and he's reconciled the world. But now we have to be reconciled to God. So we can't ever lose this, thought, this, this, this mindset that says that, hey, there still is a seeking that has to be done. 
there still is a desire that still has to be there. There still is a drawing near that has to be there. And that stuff takes sacrifice, guys. It takes, it, it might take sacrifice from the church. And we have to be willing to say, Lord, whatever it costs, I'm going to follow you. Whatever it costs, I'm going to draw near to you. And can we say that, guys? Can we say that? Or is Bonanza more important? <laughs> Come on, man. Bonanza ain't going to save you, church. So uh, look at uh, verse 15. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. So is, is sacrifice, is it encouraged in the New Testament? Does God, you know, does he like sacrifice from us? Well, look what it says. It says, therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. But don't forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So you can't tell me that God doesn't want sacrifice from us, because Hebrews says it right here, give the sacrifice of praise. You know, when I think about that, Brother Tim, I think of like, we, what we were talking about at the beginning, we, we have, we're going through some situations, and the hardest thing to do, guys, is to stay, is to keep that attitude of praise in the middle of that, because it's easy to praise God when you're on the mountaintop, but it's very difficult to praise God when you're in the middle of the valley. Am I not lying? It's very difficult, but he says, when you're in that situation, praise is almost a sacrifice, <laughs> because it's hard to do it right there. So, when we get into those situations, again, it's, it's our immediate reaction is to lose faith and to get angry. And that's so easy to do, right? It's easy to take the easy road out. Yes, it is. But the hard road is to say, I'm going to keep that attitude of praise. And you know what? In the midst of that valley, it can feel like a sacrifice. Seeking God can be a sacrifice at times. And then he also says something real simple right there. He says, don't forget to do good and to share. Because God is pleased with that sacrifice. <laughs> Have you ever had, maybe, maybe somebody in here has had one of their kids need money. It, and, you know, you gave to them, right? It was a sacrifice for you to give that $20 you got in your pocket or that $100 for their car payment or that for their rent or something like that. It's a sacrifice, amen? Y'all don't ask me for anything because I ain't got nothing right now. <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know what? If you ask, if you ask something from me, I, I'm a, I ain't going to lie to you. I, I'm not, I don't have, I, I bet everybody in here has got more money than me. Let me put it like that. <laughs> but I would sacrifice for you if I needed to. You know, it's just like giving back there. Giving is a sacrifice. If it, if it felt easy and simple to do, this church would be rich. <laughs> you know? But hey, you know, it, 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 it takes, it's a sacrifice to give. It's not easy to do, but if you do it, you support the ministry, and we get to keep going on and blessing people, and you get to keep hearing good messages, and you keep getting to come to church and things like that, but you might not have a lot of money right now, and so you might say, well, I'm just not going to give anything because I don't got any money, but you might have money to go to the movies, or to, or to buy ice cream, or to go out to eat, or to go to McDonald's, or to do everything else, well, that shows me that, hey, maybe our mindset, we don't have a sacrificial mindset then, okay? That's just in the area of giving, okay? Uh, going to church, uh-oh, uh-oh, going to church can take sacrifice. You got to wake up early. <laughs> Pastor Larry was the only one that felt that. <laughs> hey Amen. I get up at three. I get up at three thirty, so it's not really that hard for me. <laughs> you got up at two. God, that's a sacrifice, right? It's hard to do, but that's why it's so hard for people to start giving, uh, going through that lifestyle of going to church. You know, when you got a family of two people and they got three kids that have never gone to church, it's really hard for them to start coming because they're so used to sleeping late. Just for example, right, they're so used to sleeping late and to get into that culture and that attitude of going to church, it's hard. But you know what? It takes sacrifice. It takes sacrifice. It, it is, is, is going to the movies this Sunday or is it more important than going to church? Hey, I do 
Uh, every job I've been to, I've always told them, I said, you know what, um, before we even start the interview, let me just tell you, I can't work on Sunday mornings. <laughs> I'm sacrificing that time for God because I believe in the importance of going to church, you know. And, uh, and it, hey, God has always blessed me. He's touched the manager to let me have off on Sunday morning. There were some times where I had to come in Sunday night, but I didn't care. I said, I'll work every Saturday if you want me to. Just I want church, though. I want to I be able to go to church. It takes sacrifice. Amen. Now, I understand that maybe people in here, you're in a different situation and your job is different now. That's OK. I understand because everybody in here tries to come to church and that's good. Right. But let me give you a secret. Pray about it. Pray about it. Ask God to open up a door in that situation. And you think God is going to say no? <laughs> God wants you to be here, right? He wants you to come to church. Hey, just think about that. Amen. Put that in your pipe and smoke it for a little bit. Amen. <laughs> and the reason why I think church is so important is because it's like it's like a first step. You know, it's it's like Okay, can I I'm going to step on some toes, okay? It's I think, actually, I said this before, so uh, I, I don't really, I can't really see how somebody, like, can't come to church, but then still say that they're completely on fire for God on the outside, because a lot of the times, when somebody doesn't attend church, it's usually an indicator that they really might not be cultivating their relationship with God as much as they want, because I've never met anybody that said, I love God, I'm passionate for God, I'm on fire for God, but I don't go to church. I've never met anybody that's done that. Most everybody that feels that way does go to church, right? Okay, is that okay with some people in here? So if you can go to church, that shows me that you can, you, more than likely, you can probably already pray. You can pray too. You understand? If you come to church, well, hey, why should I doubt that you don't pray when you're out there as well? Why should I doubt that you don't seek God when you're out there as well? Because you're willing to make that sacrifice and come to church just so you can hear the word. Amen? And I always tell you guys this, God honors you being here. He lo God, like I said, God does not say no, and he's not disappointed that you come to church. He Why? Because you're hearing the word. He sees the sacrifice that you're making when you sacrifice your gas, when you sacrifice your money, when you sacrifice your time. And at, and at, at a time right now where, like I said, it's really hard to find time for anything, but you're still here. Amen? Amen? So I believe to give honor where honor is due. Mary gives the most in this church. <laughs> Got quiet when I said that, and maybe she didn't want me to say that, but I believe to give honor where honor is due. She, she gives a lot, she gives, and that's a sacrifice, Mary, so we thank you here at this church for that. She, if there's one thing I can say about Mary, it's that she, she's a giver. Amen? She gives, and she knows the importance about giving. Amen? And I, hey, I don't see anything wrong with that. Amen. That's, that's, that's a blessing right there in and of itself. And I believe that's one area that God is going to look at her and say, I'm going to bless you and I'm not going to forget you in that area because of your giving. At least that's what I think. Amen. So now, uh, okay, so now go to Mark chapter 10. Amen. Mark chapter 10. All right, y'all still with me? Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. The apostles sacrificed. They sacrificed their life. Jesus sacrificed. Everybody in the Bible pretty much sacrificed. Abraham sacrificed. Isaac sacrificed. Moses sacrificed. But the church ain't supposed to sacrifice? That don't make sense, Justin. There should be at least a little bit of sacrifice from the church. But if the church ain't got no AC, we ain't going to go. <laughs> if it's raining outside, we ain't going to go. I mean, come on, y'all. Okay, Mark chapter 10, verse 28. Yeah, go ahead, Justin. Go ahead, man. Mm, that's right. Yeah, just straight up. Yeah, they just, exactly. Yeah, they, they yeah, that's, that's awesome that you mentioned that, Justin, because I believe it's this scripture that's going to kind of quote that. Yeah, let, yeah, let's read this part right here. 
This is what you were saying, Justin. It says, then Peter began to say to him, see, we have left all and followed you. The disciples, they, they gave up everything to follow the Lord. Think about, what it was, think about what it was like to follow Jesus when he was walking. They thought he was a cult member. They thought he was leading a revolution. And now you're being seen with him everywhere you go. And they, they, like you said, they literally left their jobs. They dropped their fishnets, and they went and they followed Jesus. And Peter said right here, we've left all. And in the Greek, all means all. <laughs> It means all. We have left all and followed you. And so Jesus answered and he said that this, this is the good part that I was going to get to, Mary, right here. Because sacrifice is hard, right? It's, it takes, it's painful sometimes. But look at what Jesus says right there. Jesus answered and said, assuredly, I say to you that there is no one who has left his house, his brother's or sisters, or father, and mother, or wife, or children, or lands. All these things that were so important to people back in those days. They still are important to people these days. For my sake and the gospels, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time? And then he, he, gives, he recites those things again. Houses, and brothers, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands with pers but then he says this with persecutions so you're going to get all that stuff back but it's going to come with persecution hey i want it back <laughs> i don't care what it takes i want it back he says and in the age to come even and in the age to come eternal life so not only all these things, guys, that you might feel like you've given up for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of living for Jesus Christ. Yeah. This time that you're giving in church, I believe that God can give you that time back. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that God can restore years that have been stolen from yeah. you for, for a particular reason. Yeah. I believe that when you give, God will always look after your finances. Yeah. And God will say, I'm going to I'm going to bless you in that area. I've seen it. God, I, hey, we believe in grace at this church, but I also believe that God rewards us because the Bible says he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And it always, maybe you guys get tired of me saying this, but I liken it to uh, a, a child and a parent relationship, okay? Again, we, we, we are their child no matter what, right? We are in their blessing. We're in their favor no matter what. But when you did good and you got an A on that report card, you got rewarded. Well, <laughs> some of you are like, I never got rewarded for anything I did. <laughs> but hey, I remember my mom and dad rewarding me for doing good things. You know, maybe they took me for ice cream or maybe they let me go stay with a friend or they bought me something to eat. That wasn't that that was because I did something that I was supposed to do. So they rewarded me. And I believe that if our parents can be like that with us, how much of a rewarder is God who owns everything? Who can give us, you know, when we do good as well? And I want all the, even um, right past the lay, the book of Revelations mentions about being rewarded when we stand before God. And he gives us rewards when we stand before him. You know what I'm saying? So don't ever think that God can't reward you because even though you feel like you may be sacrificing, and it, it is tough, guys, but the good thing about all this is that God will reward you and God will give you back what you have lost. I think about the story of Job, for example. Y'all know the story of Job, right? Job lost everything. Family, lands, just like this. It, it could be that Jesus might have been alluding to the story of Job right here. We never know. He lost family, he lost lands, but at the end of the story, which is the part we never mentioned, the end of the story, God gives back to him everything that he lost and more. Amen. So you have to have that attitude of faith to say, you know what, things are terrible right now in my life, but I'm going to continue to stay faithful because in the end, God will give me back everything that I lost. How many of you have that attitude of faith in here today? You know what, I'm going to continue, but it's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take persecution. It's going to take for you to do what Elijah did, right? He followed Elijah everywhere. He was with God everywhere. And so many times when we start going through situations, it's like I always say, our immediate reaction is to draw back and to move away. But we can't do that, guys, because you're going to hit that water. It's not going to part. I'm just giving you guys the honest truth, right? Uh, you guys don't want me to lie to y'all, right? 
So uh, let me give you one last scripture, and then I'll be done. Hebrew, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 10. And I'll give you this script. We won't go there, but Romans chapter, chapter 10. Um, okay, first write down, I'm sorry. First write down Hebrews chapter 10, verses 32 through 35. And then if you want to write this scripture down, you can. Romans chapter 10, verse 2. Now, Romans chapter 10, verse 2 just says, present your bodies a what? living sacrifice. This is Paul telling the church, present your bodies as a sacrifice. Be a sacrifice to God, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But let's look at Hebrews chapter 10. Okay, go ahead, Pastor Larry. It says, but recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, after you got saved, you endured a great struggle with sufferings. There it is again, with persecution, with sufferings. Partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. So he's saying that like you were treated with, with suffering and persecution because of what you believed and because of who you hung out with. <laughs> and that, that's how it was in those days. If you were caught hanging around with a bunch of Christians. It don't matter if you weren't a Christian, you're a Christian, and we're going to kill you for that. And he says, partly because of the people you hung around with. And then he says in verse 34, for you had compassion on me and my chains, and you joyfully, I love that part right there, you joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you had a better an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Therefore, don't cast away your confidence, which has a what? Great reward. So think about it. In those days, if, like I said, if you were a Christian, they, maybe they would kill you, but maybe they would just go and take all your stuff away from me to discourage you from living for God anymore. They literally would go and take all their possessions away from them. The Romans would. And he says that when this would happen to them, Pastor Larry, they would accept it with joy. They said, okay, you want my table too, my coffee table? Take that, man. Hey, you know what? I got more money back here. Y'all want that too? I'll give that to you as well. I got coats. Take it all. And they did it with joy because they knew they had a great possession in heaven. They had a great reward. Can you imagine if we, were, if we had that attitude today, if more Christians had that attitude today? I don't care what happens to me, what I'm going through. I know I have a great reward in heaven. Not just in heaven, but God wants to reward you here as well because he says you have everything that pertains to life and godliness. He wants to reward you while you're here, church. So just receive that today, but know that it takes sacrifice. Know that you have to keep that mindset of, hey, I, I'm going to keep that attitude, that mindset of sacrifice, and I'm going to continue even though I might be struggling and I'm not going to cast away my confidence because it has a great reward. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. That's it. That's all I have for y'all. I hope that blessed y'all. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. Why don't we all stand? Hey, I was on time.